If you're looking for one of the very best family hatchbacks, forget about European models. Their day has been and gone. You want to look east to the likes of the new Honda Civic, the Kia Seed, or the Toyota Corolla. In this video, we're going to find out which of these is best because I'm going to talk you around their exteriors, show you their interiors, see how practical they are, drive them, and of course, launch them to check out their performance. Because I'm at Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. One of the most important considerations when you're buying a family hatchback is the price, and the Kia wins in this respect. It starts from just under £25,000, whereas the Honda and the Toyota both start at under £30,000. However, both of those cars are hybrids, whereas the Kia isn't, and hybrids are always a bit more expensive because of the potential fuel savings and the technology that they have on board. Also, what matters is the price actually pay at a dealer. So if you want to see what is a fair price for one of these cars, just head to CarWow because you can see what offers are available on each of the cars. For instance, through CarWow, there's a saving of almost £2,000 on the Kia. On the Corolla, there's a saving of almost £2,800. And on the Honda Civic, there is a saving of all, oh, just only £600. That's because the car is so new, so there aren't that many offers available just yet. But if you want to make sure that you're paying a fair price for whatever car you're buying, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. When you're buying a car, one of the first things that draws you in is the looks. And the Kia is a smart looking car. This one is the GT line, so it's got some deeper bumpers which make it look a bit sporty and you've got shiny bits of trim. Overall though, it's fairly conventional, fairly safe and inoffensive. Not lusting after it though. The Toyota Corolla seems a bit more designed. It's got a really purposeful, aggressive looking face. It stands out. It's got a nice rear end on it as well. Very, very distinctive. Though when you look at it from the side, it's still clearly just a normal family hatchback. It's a different story with the Civic though. Its side profile is more like a car from the class above. Kind of reminds me a little bit of an Audi A5 Sport. Back the way, it's got that swooping coupe-like look to it. Also like the front of it and the rear. Bits of it are similar to the previous generation Honda Civic, but it's like they removed all the mess and finally did it right this time. Even though it's a completely brand new car, you can see how that design evolved into something that really should have been in the first place. I think this is a good looking car. The Civic also feels like a bigger car on the inside as well. I don't know what this to do with the dash design, the way you have this long strip running the length of the dash, and it just creates a feeling of width. I also like these vent controls, quite cool. And the climate controls as well. Yeah, it's a nice car to sit in, driving position is really good, lots of adjustment in it, quality is generally really good as well. Infotainment system, oh, it's much better than the one in the previous Civic, which is just like, oh, just a nightmare to use. And you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, though only Apple CarPlay is wireless, Android isn't for some reason. Also, while this car has full digital dials, that's because it's the range topper. All the other versions have part digital dials. I don't know why, it's a bit of a shame really. In the Corolla, you get digital dials regardless of which model you go for. And you also get Android Auto that's wireless, not just Apple CarPlay, which is good. I also like the quality in here. There's lots of soft touch materials. And the fact that the stitching like this and on the dash just makes it feel quite expensive. And the design, it's a bit more youthful than the Civic. And it's a bit more cocooning. You feel a bit more like you're sat inside the car. It's got a sporty vibe to it, even though it's just a sensible family hybrid hatchback. I mean, look at the seats. They're the kind of seats you'd have in a sports car. Not something that's primarily designed to give you maximum efficiency. Do you know what? Compared to the other two, this Kia just feels a little bit like the previous generation of car. I mean, quality is good. It looks reasonably nice, apart from this part of the dash. Don't like the shape of that for some reason. And yes, you've got some stitching on it as well. Also, it got a nice big widescreen infotainment system. Both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are wired. There's no wireless available. But I don't know what it is. It just doesn't seem quite so cohesive as the other two. Yes, you've got some shiny bits of trim, which do lighten things up. Things like the analog dials. And you just don't feel like you're sitting so much in it like you do the other two cars. You're a bit more like you're on this. Maybe it's something to do with how low this centre console is. It's good, but not quite good enough. In the back seats, the Kia is all pretty conventional as well. So the room's good. Headroom's good, people over six foot will be fine. What's well, not so good though is when you have to carry three people in the back at once because the centre seat is a little bit of a perch and the design of these seats, it means that if you're on one of the outer seats, you end up sat like this and then that part just sort of just pushes into your back and it's not good for your posture. I'll tell you what's not ideal about the Toyota Corolla and that's knee room. It really is quite tight. I've got short legs, I'm all torso me. People with long legs are just gonna be pushing their knees up against the seat back. I just noticed something actually, the way this leather or leatherette is fitted it's all a bit baggy kind of reminds me of you know when people lose a load of weight and they have like all this extra skin a little bit like that 
Anyway, Nero's not great, but headroom's all right. Headroom's okay. However, if you need to carry three in the back at once, this is even worse than the Kia because the body is narrower. And so it's all a bit of a squeeze for everyone. In the back of the Civic, I have very few complaints. Maybe the headroom's a little bit tighter than ideal. People over six foot might find it a little bit cosy in here. But the rest of it, it just feels so spacious. Look, knee room's really good. Foot space is good. If you need to carry three in the back at once, it just feels wider than the other two cars. And the central seat is quite comfy. Yeah, it feels like a nice roomy car. It does help that the top spec car gets this sunroof, which lets a bit of extra light. But either way, it just feels like a bigger car than the other two, to tell you the truth. Now let's see what these cars are like to drive. I'm going to start with the Kia because it's the most conventional of the three. You know what? This is a really good car. They've really thought about how to just make it a nice, easy, simple car to live with. So I want a twisty road and it handles as well as you need your normal family hatchback to handle. It'll go around the bends without, you know, giving you any problems at all. It just grips, goes round. Is it fun? No, it's not, but that doesn't matter. It's safe, secure, sensible, everything that you want it to be. The little engine, it won't blow your socks off, but it's peppy enough. The gear change, a bit notchy, but light, easy. Clutch is fine as well. The suspension is generally pretty good, so the car is reasonable over bumps. It's not the smoothest, but it's not the most bouncy either. And that's really, really useful when you're heading to town. And this car is super easy to drive in town. It really, really is. The brakes, progressive and smooth, absolutely simple. Another good thing about it is the maneuverability. So it has quite a tight turning circle on this thing. 10.6 meters. It's really, really good. I'm gonna do a U-turn just here. Can I get round? No, it'd be a wheel killer, but it was close. Finally then, let's see what the Kia Seed is like on a faster road. You do notice there's quite a bit of noise from the tires and a little bit of buffeting from around here as well. It's not the quietest car to travel in, and that can get a bit tiring over longer journeys, which is a shame really, because otherwise it's a good all-rounder. Now I've jumped into the Toyota Corolla. How does it compare? It instantly feels just a little bit more responsive than the Kia. I feel a bit more connected to the car. So I'm driving down the same twisty country road and it seems to have a slightly sportier edge. There's not loads in it and it's not like some sports car or hot hatch, but it just feels a bit keyed into the road a touch more. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into sports mode because I have sports mode on my Corolla. I'm not sure what that's doing. <laughs> I think it just makes the throttle response a little snappier, but it's not that discernible. I'm impressed with how it's dealing with bumps in the road. So mid-corner over a bump, it doesn't get out of control. It just stays composed. And when you're entering town like I am now, the ride is generally pretty smooth. A little bit better than the Kia, not massively so, but just a little bit better. And so far, that's the best way to compare the two driving experiences. This is just a little bit better. Then it's going to have another advantage now as you get into a real slow section. And that's the fact that if I want to, I can go into EV only mode. And now everything is silent because I'm just running using the electric motor. You can't go that far in electric power alone, but you can just mooch around and do little maneuvers and it just makes it so much more relaxing. There is a bit of a downside though. You see, because you've got the hybrid system and you have regenerative braking, when you first press the brake pedal, it can seem a little bit grabby ever so slightly compared to the Kia, just because you're actually using the electric motor to slow down. It's kind of working in reverse to recharge the battery and it doesn't feel quite as natural as just normal brakes. You have got normal brakes as well when you really need to stop but there is just that little sensation at the beginning, it's a bit grabby. It's not terrible, better than a lot of other hybrids, but you do notice it as touch. The turning circle on this is 11.4 meters, so slightly more than on the Kia. I'm gonna come out of sports mode, actually. Make the steering a bit lighter. Can I get it round in one go? There's no chance. Now with the Kia, I thought I might just make it. I was a bit worried about scraping my alloys, so I backed out of it. This one, 100%, no, I'm not gonna make it. Ugh. That's one thing that annoys me about this car. Massive rear pillar just creates a bit of a blind spot. Right, let's see what this is like on the motorway. First of all, overtaking a slow car in front. Pickup's pretty good. Comfy seats. It's also quieter than the Kia inside when you're traveling. Good for long distances, this. Finally then, the Civic. Let's see what it's like. Even though it hasn't really got a gearbox, you kind of think it has, look. It changes gear, but it doesn't really. It's lies, it's faking it. 
I can try putting on these paddles and you sort of think they're doing something, but all they're actually doing is altering the amount of regen braking when you lift off the accelerator. <laughs> it's weird. And the noise, it's digitized, this noise. It's played through the speakers. But it makes you think that you've actually got an engine that's revving like a normal engine would when it's attached to a normal gearbox. It doesn't make sense. Tell you what doesn't make sense either, how well this thing actually corners. It really is genuinely good fun on a twisty road. It just seems to deal with the bumps really well. This is definitely more fun to drive on a twisty road than the Corolla or the Kia Seed, without a doubt. Just grips. <laughs> and it makes a decent noise, even though it's fake and I know it's just lying to me. Now let's see what this Honda Civic is like to drive in town. First thing to note is that the visibility forwards is brilliant. Got a low dash, a nice big wide windscreen. So it also helps driving around town. The steering is reasonably light. There's no gears to think about because it's automatic. In fact, I'm just driving around on electric power alone right now, relaxing. The brakes are pretty decent actually. They don't feel too grabby, even though the first part of the braking is regen. Honda's really nailed this. One thing I can't complain about is the suspension over bumps. Really does a good job of dealing with bumps, potholes, speed humps. There is one thing though, and that's that the turning circle of 11.6 meters is slightly larger than on the Toyota Corolla and Kia Seed. Look, I've got this up at the first stage. <laughs> I'm supposed to turn around there, but I haven't quite got enough luck. Come on. I think that was bad driving. Let me just give it another go. I was so keen to go deep into this road that I could at least try to make it round here, but look, absolutely no chance. I'm pretty much going straight ahead by the time I reach this curb. Oh well. That's why you learn three point turns, don't you, for your driving test. That's the only problem when you drive around town with this car. And it's not that bad, really. Finally then, on a faster road, go over and take the car in front. Here we go, revved out. There, it's like it's changed gear. And again. But it's not actually changing gear. What? What absolute witchcraft? It's essentially being driven by its electric motor the whole time, yet it gives you the sensation that it's being driven by an internal combustion engine directly through a gearbox to the wheels, but it's not. It feels natural. It feels totally natural. I am dumbfounded. Despite its weirdness, overall, this Honda is my favorite of the three cars to drive. When it comes to carrying stuff, the Corolla is the least practical of these three cars. Its peak capacity is a modest 313 litres, and some of those litres are underneath this false floor. This does mean, though, that you'd have no load lift to lift stuff over, so you can just slide things in and out. And when you fold down the rear seats, look at this, they lie completely flat, which is good. Moving on to the seat, its peak capacity is a respectable 395 litres, which is pretty big. But once again, quite a lot of that space is underneath this false floor. And it does mean, though, that you have no load lip to lift things over. And when you fold down these rear seats, look, they lie almost completely flat. Not completely, not like in the Toyota. Finally, then, we come to the Honda Civic, which has the biggest boot capacity of 410 litres, which is really quite large. Only a bit of that space is underneath the false floor. Look, it does mean, though, there's a load lip to lift things over. However, the boot floor is quite low, which does help when you're loading it and unloading it. When you fold the rear seats down, the floor isn't completely flat, which does make it slightly harder to slide things to the front. But if you look at that space there, it's just more roomy and more usable than on the other two cars. And I like this feature as well, the load cover. It's a really clever idea because when it's not in use, it doesn't take up much space and you can easily remove it and store it simply just in the corner there. Whereas the other two cars have big low covers which get in the way when you want to load the car up. The engine choices for these cars are pretty simple. With the Kia, there is just one. It's a 1.5 litre turbo petrol with 160 horsepower, which drives the front wheels via either a six speed manual or an automatic gearbox. In the case of the Honda, you've got a hybrid system. You've got a two litre petrol engine, which acts as a generator to provide electricity for an electric motor that then drives the front wheels. <laughs> Confusing, I know. Although the petrol engine can drive the front wheels at higher speeds. There is no gearbox as well in that car. Don't be too confused. It drives fine and it has a power output of 184 horsepower. Finally then the Toyota, that's also a hybrid like the Honda, however it's more conventional. So you have a petrol engine which is mated to an electric motor that helps boost it, that drives the front wheels via an automatic gearbox. Now you can get two engine choices with the Toyota. If you have the 1.8, it has just 120 horsepower, so you don't want that. Instead you want to step up to the two litre, which is what that car is, then you have 181 horsepower. 
What I seem to do, and that's to check the claimed 0 to 60 time. So Kia says 8.4 seconds. Let's see what I can do, especially this time in gear here. Nobody's going to do this in their Kia seat, but I'm at Watson, are you watching Carway, right? Here we go. Good gear change. What are we going to do? Come on. Ooh, 8.3 seconds. That was a good launch. <laughs> This Toyota Corolla, two litres, especially 0 to 16, 7.9 seconds. I'm gonna time it now. It should be easier to launch than the Kia because I don't have to do anything, it's automatic. So brake boost it a bit. Here we go. We're in full sports mode. What's it gonna do? You can hear that CVT, can't you? 0 to 16, 7.6 seconds. That's quicker than it felt. This Honda Specialist in 060 in 8.1 seconds, but we'll find out what my specialist timing gear says now in sports mode. Let's do it. It's so weird the way it revs like that. 6.79 seconds. The pickup, because it's just driven by an electric motor, really. Just nuts. That shocked me. Way better than I anticipated. So then what's my final verdict? Well, the Kia Seed is a really good car. I like it a lot. However, the Toyota Corolla is ever so slightly better and it's just more pleasurable to drive, but it's not as nice to drive though as the new Honda Civic. Really surprised me this. So did the performance and how spacious it is. I like this car a lot. It's an absolutely brilliant all round family hatchback and that's why it wins this test. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and if you've not done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by clicking on my face there. Click on those boxes there and you can watch some more videos. Thanks for watching.